Ooh, welcome back to another Thursday night football preview show. This week we've got the Detroit Lions minus one and a half point favorites at Green Bay. They're traveling to Lambeau. 45 and a half point over under in the video. We're going to talk through the key storylines of the game, the key injuries of the game, our favorite underdog player props because we've been scorching hot. Don't think we've actually missed one as a trifecta yet uh, three this weeks. year. Uh, if you sign up with our code BDG today, you will get a Jared Goff 0.5 total yard square, otherwise known as a free square, otherwise known as free money, otherwise known as funny money, otherwise known as I don't know no other nicknames. Just yeah. fucking sign up. Just just do the right thing. Just do the right thing for your children. Let's let's talk about the weather. I haven't I haven't even That's checked the weather on this here. one. Oh, I meant in the game. If it's shit here, it's probably shit there. Lambeau. It's going to be 60 degrees and clear. No weather concerns. Oh, <laughs> let's move past the weather. Uh, let's talk about some of the key injuries. So apparently David Montgomery and Taylor Decker, Dan Campbell's optimistic that they're going to play in this one. Josh Reynolds was apparently active last week. He had a groin injury, ended up with zero targets, zero catches after starting kind of hot. So not really sure what's going on with the uh, wide receiver two situation there in Detroit. Regardless, getting DeMont and Taylor Decker back, probably a little bit more important than Josh Reynolds, whether or not he's running routes out there. Green Bay Packers, still up in the air. Do we have any official word? We filmed this Wednesday night. It's 5.42 p.m., so we probably won't really know whether or not Aaron Jones and Christian Watson are active until a couple hours before kickoff. The vibes feel pretty good there on Green Bay, right? They feel all right. Jones. It, I was going to say it feels much better for Jones. I would say if I had to put a percentage of it, I think Jones is like 80% will play. Christian Watson kind of still feels like 50-50. Watson's got it. you got to lock it up. He's got to dial in. He's got to sure. – he's – I mean – how many weeks is this hamstring going to be ailing this <laughs> no. man before, you know? Um, Got to be frustrating if you're a Christian Watson owner. Uh, but Aaron Jones getting back is is really uh, fantastic news. Obviously, David Bakhtari is apparently supposed to be playing. Uh, Jerry Alexander back also. Randomly missed last week's game with a back injury, but he's supposed to be um, back in the lineup as well. So they're borderline full strength, at least most of the skill players that people are worried about. Now, general storylines for the game. This is like a really good game. I, I'm, I feel like this is going to be a fun game to watch. Yeah, this is for the North. It this feels is, like this is a two-horse race at this point. Like the Bears feel out of it. Vikings, you start 0-3. That's tough to come back from. Vikings and are lucky. The Vikings are lucky that the Bears are so bad. They are. Because you, you want to say that they're in like different tiers entirely, yeah. and they obviously are, but like they're both 0-3. <laughs> yeah. Records don't lie. Numbers don't lie. Numbers never did. This could show like is Jordan Love like – officially like that top 15 is he top 12 like how good is he we all know he's gotten over the bust allegations and whether or not he was worth it but just how good is he that was my number one uh storyline point of the game was like Jordan Love he's been playing great this this feels like a kind of like a not a make or break game obviously but it'll tell us a lot about whether or not he's like really cemented himself as the guy that we think he is up to this point Green Bay has been wildly efficient so far they've been at less than full strength obviously they've missed Aaron Jones and Christian Watson for most of the year but I was looking up some numbers both offenses are top 12 in scoring right now so you'd think we've got some you know some good players some some talents a powerhouse football being played uh, Green Bay has converted 78 percent of their red zone trips into touchdowns only Miami has a higher rate they are fourth in points per play super efficient um, tied for first in giveaways per game in a good way so like Jordan Love is pretty much protecting the ball. They are protecting the ball as an offense. And I think maybe that's why like Vegas might be saying like, Oh, this might be a game where Jordan love kind of like drops back down to the median or something. It's because they've played with very few mistakes and played so efficient that the numbers might come back down. I think that's the only reason why like too good to be true. Yeah. Like too good to be true. It's just like, on a like too good to be true. I would agree. And that sense was like 17 point comeback in the fourth quarter. Like that doesn't happen on accident. Don't get me wrong. I'm a believer. Yeah. Like I think love is very good. And I, I will say like, I don't even know if you were with me, but, like, I was panicking in that game. I was like, damn, they really beat the Bears. Now they're down 17-0 to the Saints. Like, mm. I was kind of like, ah, oh, fuck. No, I mean, the Saints are, like, a, a great a great defense. defense for the most part. And, and again, like, it's it's so hard to judge Jordan Love with no Watson. the skill set. I mean, the skill, yeah, the skill players that he's playing with. It, it'd be like Sam Howell, right, has been doing it at full strength for a bunch of games. But it would be like judging him if J Jahan Dotson and Terry McLaurin, all those guys were out. It's like, of course, you can't really, like, get a feel for whether or not he's a good quarterback until he's at full strength. Um, and I think something you brought up last week maybe was like Matt LaFleur being a good coach. Yeah, he might actually be good. He might be kind of nice. I think he was, or he was seen as like an overrated guy. You have Aaron Rodgers. Like it's hard to get respect in that sense. But, you know, Aaron Rodgers is gone. Their offense is clicking. And, um, you know, he's, he's a guy who came from the McVay-Shanahan tree, and we've seen a lot of success with those guys. So. Brandon Staley. 
very successful <laughs> McVeigh. I don't even okay, but no, like, I agree. He I wasn't agree. really from the McVeigh tree, but you know, offensive the <laughs> offensive guys. Well, it's like getting well. out from the Aaron Rodgers grip, and like yeah. obviously, obviously, like Rodgers is a great fucking player, whatever, a bunch of MVPs, whatever, but. I, it does like stifle the offense a little it's bit. His way or the highway, like. right? It stifles the other players because they're probably so like just caught up in I don't want to make a mistake. I have to play this way, and like no one gets to really be flexible with, it, especially like Matt Lafleur. So I think in a way this opens things up, you know, and and can have a ceiling in an offense that we don't really think about because we've never really seen these players get to like play freely. Yeah, I think it was like a, a year ago or something. I saw in like a trivia game Matt Lafleur had the best like winning percentage of a head coach. And that was like, okay, that's kind of a trick question. Like his, his he, first year he got to Green yeah. Bay, went to like yeah. 13 and three or something. Yeah, shit. he was just ripping off 13 win seasons and you gave him like zero credit for it. And maybe he didn't deserve it then, but I don't know. Matt LaFleur's cooking. I yeah. like him. I, like yeah, I got good vibes out of Green Bay. I got yeah. good vibes out of Detroit too. Like this, this is why this game is going to be kind of fun. Green Bay's like defense. Like that's, we really don't talk, like it's good. It's, it's good. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty good. Rashawn Gary had a three sack game yeah. last week. Rashawn Gary's like a, it's such a problem for offensive line. I think him versus uh, Penny Sewell is going to be a really cool matchup. I think there's a lot of like individual matchups kind of going on here because Detroit has a very high graded pass blocking grade. They're number six per PFF. Sean Gary coming up three sack game. Green Bay actually has the number three ranked pass blocking grade offensive line. Detroit's becoming quickly becoming a very good defensive line aided by Aiden Hutchinson coming off his first two sack game. So like there's a lot of you know underlying things which is what's going to make this game so fun um, from like a fantasy perspective. Aaron Jones is likely back. Demont, we don't know. Jones, though, it's like, I think he's like oh, still RB1 range. I have him as like RB8 100%. on the week. If he's active, he's he's in your yeah, lineup for sure. Like, even 90% of Aaron Jones is an RB1. Like, it, uh, yeah. our sample size is so small, but it's like, if you had to go off one game, you want it to be when he's was able to be RB1. Like, you want positive at more than him having a bad one game, and you're hoping he's not that. No, Jones, Jones will be fine. But Detroit, though, like. Yeah. I, I, if Monty's out, I'm still going to give Gibbs one more shot. I think he's RB1. I mean, I think the work is still going to go to him. He disappointed mm. against Atlanta bad. You're going to give him, you're going to rank him RB9? Yeah. <sighs> I just, I feel like, um, I still believe in him as a player. Like, no, no, no. Me, me too. Me too. He feels like he struggled on the goal line and in that red zone offense. Like, I agree, but he, I do think, could they come up with a way? Could he catch one and run one in? Yeah, but I, don't you feel like we're just, like, keep, we keep kind of, like, rolling the dice on, on that with Gibbs on a week-to-week basis? Like, is eventually this, we'll hit jackpot, but... Is this just DeAndre Swift all over again? I don't She's mean, due. I would agree... She's permanently due. If Monty was here and I was still ranking him high, but I think without Monty, I, I, I got to give him one more. Yeah. Like, that Atlanta game just wasn't pretty in general. He had, he had 18 carries last game? Yeah, that was his most. He's in carries. Kind of weird, though. He had two targets, right? You thought he'd be a little bit more involved with Josh Reynolds banged up, and we thought Amarok. <laughs> he got banged. stuffed a few times. <laughs> yeah, so he funny. did. He's just not there. Like, they they told us they wanted to use DeMont, DeMont yeah. in those situations. And you could tell, like, they missed DeMont. Like, they wanted to use him there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it necessarily concerns people. Like, he had nine targets a game before. You Either you hear Dan Campbell come out after the game and, like, blame Gibbs for one of the – that interception that got through because he was like – Gibbs was really indecisive on that route out oh, of the backfield, really? like, late in the game. And it kind of felt one of those things where it was like Dan Campbell's like a disappointed father. Yeah, yeah, he was just like he was so disappointed in Gibbs like running the wrong route and being indecisive that he almost is gonna like hold it against him in the in the passing game or at least like in very clutch time situations where I feel like that could possibly be a difference there or something. But that's definitely something to think about. But it's also like at the end of the day, like I feel like the offensive coordinator might see it completely differently. He's yeah, the, sure. Like it, it, it's hard to it's worth looking into, but I don't know how much weight I would put into it. Do you okay. remember the guys you have ranked? Behind Gibbs? I can look. There's got to be. This might be maybe hot right away. RB10 for me is Raheem Mostert. Does that feel crazy to have Gibbs over him? Yeah. I Yeah. Like, I, who's that, against that, the Bills? Yeah, that feels yeah. like what you want versus what you should do for sure. I think, like, how can you rank Mostert outside, like, the top six or seven at this point? I think against the Bills, like. Okay, fair. You're right. Say less. That, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> that and the, the Dolphins. I don't want to turn this into a Dolphins show, but they rolled out with Devon A. Chain. No, that's true. Like, yeah. if it wasn't such a crushing game, would have Mostert? Like, I, I don't know. Nine versus ten, I don't think it's that crazy. I that's- just feel like Mostert's worst game, though, has pretty much been level with Gibbs's best game. Fair, but he has scored in every game. I don't know how it's could but, be but sustainable, he's, but could not be. Right, like know. the offense like lives yeah. in the red zone. Uh, and also behind him, I got Cook and Mixon. James, James Cook, Cook and, yes. and Mixon? Okay. I think that's probably the right 
ish. If no Monty, tier. you're definitely playing Gibbs over like Mixon and, uh, and over James. Mixon. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. If no Monty, definitely like yeah. over Mixon. Uh, James Cook, I, I kind of like too, but they're, I I almost feel like they're similar players at this point. Yeah, that's what they're like all back to back. I, yeah. I just think he could earn himself like the RB one role for this week. If Monty plays, Gibbs is middle RB2 range, and then if Monty, Monty himself would if be If Monty RB1. plays, Gibbs is RB18 and Monty's RB12? Yeah, Monty would be borderline RB1. So you're willing to put him, like, right back in RB1 status? I think so, injury? just because there's such a high likelihood of a touchdown. Yeah. Like, a, like I'm factoring that in a lot, but that's kind of, there's good reason to believe in that. Do you think there ever becomes a point where, like, Gibbs really, really breaks out? Probably not. It, it, it's just hard without the volume. It, it is hard, but... I think... Or do you think if he if he sprinkles in a touchdown like every three weeks or something, we're probably looking at him a little bit differently? I think it's More clear excited. that wherever he was going in drafts was pretty early. Yeah. Like, Price was overpaid. But well, he was going significantly higher than Monty. Oh, and I think at worst which case... Always felt, which always felt crazy. Right. Yeah. But I think at worst case, they are the same in terms of, like, fantasy value. I think... Yeah. I don't know. I think Gibbs could finish as RB2. I think Monty legit has RB1 upside. Maybe top 15 versus top I'd say 12. 15... But it, Monty does give a little bit of that vibe where um, I mean, if you've owned like Joe Mixon over the last couple of years or so, it's like hit or miss. You're always kind of feeling like, oh fuck, like this better be the thing because he's not going to get another chance to make it happen, kind of thing. You know, like if he misses on the goal line, you kind of feel like, oh fuck, <laughs> a five point game point, might yeah. be incoming. Yeah. You get that feeling a little bit when you're a Monty owner. Whereas like Gibbs, it's like let him rip for like eight touches and I feel good about it, kind of thing. What, so, do, you, what do you think about the quarterback? So I have love over Goff. I don't, I don't really, I don't think it's that crazy, but. Be honest, like, Goff really hasn't shown that much, like, upside. Yeah, I will say I did brick up last week. I put Daniel Jones over Brock Purdy, and that completely laid an egg, but... I mean, I guess, uh, again, it's tough without knowing the weapons there. If Mm -hmm. the Packers are at full strength, I'm like, Jordan Love, yeah, sure, fucking run it. He's been the QB3, QB15, and QB7. Like, dude's been flirting with that QB1 range and then exceeded it and then some. And the Lions are... Oh, and the Lions have given up the most fantasy points to quarterbacks this season. So it's like... That's what up the big game? I, yeah, I was looking at the game. So they played KC week one. Mahomes threw two touchdowns, but he was also without Kelsey. That's like the worst receiving group. In the world. It also feels Seahawks. like it, Mahomes could have had like a vintage breakout, like huge Mahomes game if like Kadarius Tony didn't have three crazy drops. Yeah. Like they left those receivers left so much on the table. They've allowed Mahomes. the most fantasy points to wide receivers. Dude, Gino, even while playing the Falcons last week, that's, yeah. that's, that's bad. Because Gino ate him up, and then Mahomes probably had like 23-ish points. Yeah. But again, probably could have had a 30 bomb, like easy. If- that's crazy, thinking that like what the Broncos just gave up to Miami too. But either way, yeah, I mean, I, I um, who would who, you start straight up, Love or Goff? I would go Goff. I don't know if that's, I think I might be a little hypnotized by Goff right now though, because he looks so good in real life. And I personally don't have him in really any fantasy league, so I don't know exactly where his like fantasy points per games are right now. But it feels like he is really safe to finish. He it, like he feels like there's far less chance of him busting. I also think his upside is a little more, even though he doesn't ha- rush the ball like Jordan Love does. I'm kind of with you. I'll say underdog. So some reference they do have golf projected a little bit more, about I think like one point more. But if jo- if if Jones and Christian Watson are full go. I would. This I would, is under I might the assumption love. he has just Jones. Okay. Like even without Watson, I can. If any, either, if either of those pieces are out, I would, I would take off over Love. Having having Jordan Love's pieces back on that offense feels like his upside exceeds Jared Goff, but I still think I would just start Jared Goff because I, I don't think I'm going to be disappointed in that. Yeah, I feel you. Okay, let's move over to the tight ends because these are kind of interesting players here. So Sam Laporta, oh, yeah. all the way up at tight end six. He's a tight end two on the season. Yeah, not surprising. He's been consistent. I still, this feels like a guy who just, you start hearing on every single podcast now. So like the the bad week is definitely like coming very, oh, very soon. Sure. You know, he's like become like the, the target for everybody. But it's like such a teardrop now. It's like, dude, I'm Pat Fryermuth, like yeah. David and Joe, who Kyle Pitt, like, these are guys you thought going into the season they could flirt with that top ten, and then it's just gross out. Yeah, there. I got no argument against it. Like I feel fine with Laporta there. Musgrave at tight end twelve. Musgrave's kind of interesting. I feel like every single week he's been about like I don't know if you guys have like watched the plays that he's almost caught, but he's been about six inches away. Jordan Love keeps overthrowing him on like deep he touchdown passes. Overthrows way too much. Like re- realistically, Luke Musgrave could be like the tight end three right now. Yeah, if, if like six inches went another yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, you can I, say that for a lot of players. I, I mentioned guess. that earlier. Like his A dot is second in the league. Like, yeah. Yeah, he's, I like. I, th- I think the they're both. Plays. I think they're both starters. I think in tight end premium, you can honestly probably get both of them in in like flex spots too. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so let's let's say assuming Christian Watson does not play, 
Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed. You have Dobbs behind Reed. Yeah, I think Reed's just getting more usage. Like, I, I know week three wasn't the best. I think he might look like Jordan Love's guy more so. I like both of them. Yeah. I, I think I would rank both of them that higher. close. Like, it, I don't know if I have a huge – like, you could probably talk me off of him, but from what I've seen, I, I, I barely leaned Reed from the first two weeks. Yeah, you have Reed at 49. You got Dobbs at 51. Yeah. I would. I think I would put both of them around that, like, wide receiver 38 to 40 mark. This is if Watson plays. Okay. They would go up to the early 40s, maybe crack into the 30s if Watson's out. I feel you. Okay. This is based on Watson playing. Yeah. So there, there's just a whole lot of uh, – any chance you go back to Josh Rennie here? Or is last week just too scary? I didn't even really like Josh Rennie when he was producing. It's tough. He's got one amazing game, and then it's like – Oh, he had two good games, though. Well, week, well, week two or was, was like, I just like overly excited because he hit the over? I think week two <laughs> was like 80 year. yards, two tutties. So I, but week one – Week one, I, I feel like score, he had, though. No, nah, but he was good. That first, the first game that we watched together, Thursday Night Football, I feel like he went like six for 80. I thought oh. so, too. He definitely right. played really well week one. I got to check, Josh. I, right. I'm not saying he played. I think just week two is just like 20. Sure, plus but I'm not. Game. Right. I'm not afraid of him. You see, I got him above Reed and Dobbs. Like, so you would play Josh Reynolds above those two? If Watson's in. Okay. Week one against Kansas City, four for 80. Okay. okay. And then Solid. five for 66 and two tugs against Seattle. Yeah. And then last week, I'm see, Didn't the play. thing with last Art, week is, like, yeah. we got no actual information. It was like, oh, he's kind of limited, but, like, that happens with so many players, and they just play full. Yeah. Like, Amon Ra. Like, and we don't even know if he was actually hurt or if he yeah. just had a really bad game. So that that's what makes me, like, scary, and I'd probably put him down the ranking just because we have no idea what's actually going on with him. Fair. All right. Uh, let's get to the underdog slips. First and foremost, if you are a new depositor on underdog and you use the code BDGE the first time signing up, they're going to give you a free Jared Goff square, 0.5 total yards. And if you watch this video the next day, Friday, Saturday, whatever, they're, they're still going to have a 0.5 square up there for you. It's going to be a different player, but they're giving out this special for everybody. I also think they are now matching your deposit all the way up to $500. Might be lying. So... Until, like, October 4th, so I think you're right. Unbelievable. Kid knows. Company man. All the way up to $500. <laughs> they will match you. They'll give you the free square, Jared Goff, so that is the free square that we will start you off with. I'm going to hit you with Aiden Hutchinson, 0.5 sacks, the higher, and they're giving you a spicy little boost on this. They're going to 1.25x your square, your slip, whatever. Um, Hutchinson, I'm looking at him as, like, one of the upper echelon guys that gets to the QB in this league. He's, like, he was drafted to be an elite edge rusher, and he's coming into his own now. Last week, he had the two sacks. He's also tied with the NFL lead, 19 pressures. TJ Watt, Max Crosby, Aiden Hutchinson, 19 pressures. That's The difference with getting those sacks really just kind of is luck. It's like, is the quarterback holding onto the ball? This guy, they all got the same amount of pressures. Some guys got to the quarterback, some guys didn't. Kind of the same stat. It's, just, it's, it's almost a luck thing. So you look at the guys who have the same pressure rate, guys who have the same uh, hurries, that kind of thing, like QB hits, et cetera. They're all at like three, four, five, six sacks where uh, Aiden Hutchinson, based on his kind of underlying numbers, should be at that. So I think the 0.5 sack, being able to split a sack will get you there as well, or at least, you know, push that square. I think he gets, I think he gets home tomorrow night. I like it. Let's cook. It's always a little, feels a little risky, but it, it's kind of like what you said with like a, a Derrick Henry rushing touchdown. Like he's always kind of good for one, mm -hmm. no matter what the game is. I mean, what do you, do you have a projection of what he ends up in the year? In terms of Aiden and Hutchinson, Hutchinson? sacks? Uh, I'd probably put him around like the 10 mark, 10, 11. Okay. I thought you'd go higher, honestly. But I don't, like, I feel like shooting higher than that's kind of like almost unrealistic. That's fair. You know? That's but he's, fair. He, we're three games in, he's got two sacks, but he's got so many fucking hurries that like, yeah. mm -hmm. it, at this point, he could have been at two, but he also could have been at like five. Had he been at five at this point, then I would have been like, all right, maybe like 14 or something like that. But I'll keep it. The only point I was trying to make is he, he, could be, he could be a guy who averages a sack a game. Right. Yeah. And, and you're thinking about, like, the way I was looking at it, too, is, like, maybe that's only eight or nine more, but, again, there's three less games than yeah. when the season started. So it almost is a sack of game, yeah. in a sense. It's a nice little spicy I, I'm square. excited for them to get another guy with them eventually. Yeah, they're going to be nice. pretty fun. That's always huge, having another guy on the other side that can, sure. that can pressure. I feel like, not to go off on a tangent, but I, I feel like that's why we've seen Miles Garrett just absolutely eat because that whole D line got yeah. better. The so. whole D is so fucking good Cleveland right now. Defense. Oh, man, I think they're yeah. like legit number one in like a lot yeah. of uh, categories. He's going to fuck around and win a Super Bowl, dude. No, Watson's going to make sure they don't. All He's, right, he needs to grow up. Uh, yeah, enough of the enough of the Browns. We're not here <laughs> talking about the Browns. We're here talking about Jordan Love and taking his over of 16 and a half fantasy points. Jordan Love, he's gone over this total all three of his games against New Orleans, a good defense, Atlanta. You got a slow paced offense. You would expect a low scoring game. And even fantasy wise, he's breaking this number. And he did against the Bears, but, you know, Bears suck, whatever. Uh, Detroit, they have a pretty good run defense. So I'm kind of expecting that 
Jordan Love might have to attempt more passes in this game if they can't get the run going. Aaron Jones being back, that's good for some dump-offs. Um, Detroit. Some dumpies. Some dumpies. <laughs> Detroit's kind of got a fringy pass defense. I think realistically, like, that's just how the Packers are going to have to attack this game is through the air. Uh, hopefully they get Christian Watson back, but again, even if they don't, he's been able to navigate and uh, get rack up the fantasy points without him. Detroit, like you said, led up the most fantasy points to quarterback so far. Yeah, um, I, I double-checked that. I want to correct myself. It was based on the first two games, so Desmond okay. probably brought them down. I was going to say, okay. yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, fucked up. Stop lying. I made this Monday night, and I realized I didn't update it. I mean, even then, like, I, I almost feel like They're more the than style, capable of sucking. Though, yeah, the, the style of that fight with Detroit and Atlanta, I think Atlanta was just set up for failure. Because their offense is so run heavy, and that's mm-hmm. what Detroit is like set up to do. So and set up a failure because of their QB. Yeah, like like having to rely on Desmond Ritter to throw the ball is just not a recipe for success. So I I've been disrespecting the Lions' defense too much this year. I'll admit that, but I still don't think that it's big of you. It's very big of you. Thank you, dude. Low key though, is Jordan Love sneaky? Good at running the ball. He is. Like, he can move he, a little yeah, bit. He totally does. Just a sneaky dancer. Like, you sure. saw that fourth down when he needed to get in? Mm-hmm. He can move. He was like that. Good for the fantasy points. Oh, yeah. Big time. Green my, my only concern is him finishing with one passing touchdown. I don't know why. There's, like, something telling me that that might happen, and it's really hard to score yeah. fantasy points with one touchdown. That That's also, fair. like, could also just I mean, last week he only all. had one passing touchdown, but he did find the end zone through the ground. So yep. that was what got him over. But, you know, that's a possibility. That's an out in this situation. So uh, we'll take it. And um, yeah. and the day is just playing really fucking well, and Detroit's mm-hmm. passing defense isn't great. So Yeah, I think 16 and a half, just a little disrespectful. Also, like, his yards. I don't know. I think that's a good pivot if, if fancy one. points. Pick one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go fancy points. <laughs> but 230, it's low. I'm just saying it's low. I'm just saying. Just throwing it out there. All right, I got Luke Musgrave to go over 35 and a half receiving yards. I wanted to take his fantasy points, but I didn't have that lineup. So yards is the best we got. He's gotten this in two of his three games. He has the second best, second highest A dot in the NFL, only behind Kyle Pitts. If the dude, the dude gets the ball, he's cooking, he's going deep. They want him in big plays. And Detroit gives up the second most fantasy points to tight ends this so far through the season through three games. Again, just the, crazy because the the, game one was Kelsey list too. Uh, yeah, which Noah Gray cooked though, or no, it was Blake Bell. Blake Bell. It did like fine, but I'm saying like the fact that they're still worst and mm. didn't have to play Kelsey. Like, and fantasy points don't always correlate to receiving yards. Like, you could just get a touchdown and that would boost up his points and not his yards. But if there's a fantasy line, I like it. But that's not what we have right now. Give me the yards. This is kind of correlated with Jordan Love. I'm in on the Packers offense on Thursday night football. But that's that's kind of crazy. You said they've given up the second most fantasy points to tight ends. To tight ends, meaning. Blake Bell, Noah Gray, Noah Fant. I don't know if the Seahawks used you know another tight end. Because Pitts and Janu, bro. Yeah, Janu. This our save, the city like, save. Did <laughs> Janu tear up the, the Dude, they Lions both like, like that? They, uh, I think Janu. Or wait, was it week two? We had a game where, where Janu and, and Kyle Pitts combined uh, it might like have been 12 both. catches. Ooh, I don't think I don't. That wasn't last week, though, was it? No, I'm I'm thinking not. No, but I remember looking at. I Janu, think it was against the Packers, maybe. Janu having like a 35 piece game yesterday. Or in week three still, something like that. Like, I, I, week two, he did great. We played – are you talking about – sorry, we I just realized we played both these teams. Are you, are you talking about against the Packers or the Lions? Lions. Like, which defense allow – the Lions allow. Yeah, yeah, they didn't have a big game last week, I don't think. Pitts, I'm pretty sure, like, led our receiving group with, like, 35 yards, though. All right. Either way. Well, Ma- I mean, math says second most. No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. You might be right. I'm saying what I was saying. Okay. I was talking about versus the Packers, though. I think we're both lost. Let's just move Yeah, on. true facts. <laughs> Game predictions. Who's winning? I'm, I'm going to take the Lions minus a point and a half. I, I don't really have great Same. logic behind it. I just feel like they're maybe a more well-rounded team, but I'm not even sure if I believe that as I'm saying it. I feel like they're both just, they both feel like similar teams. Kind they of. do. They're both like good offensive lines, good not incredible weapons at this point. I guess the Lions I might give the skill positions to because if Christian Watson doesn't play, Aaron Jones maybe a little banged up. I don't know. Defenses are both good in some aspects, not great in other aspects, have a very good pass rusher. I don't know. I'm just taking the Lions minus one and a half yeah, points, my, points. My player picks are always like deep thoughts, stats backed, but like game picks, it's like vibes. Like just <laughs> what am I feeling? I think this is just the Lions. They feel a little bit more like – this year feels a little bit more theirs than the Packers, and I, I really think the Packers, in time, got a good foundation, but right now I think the Lions are looking like the better team in the division. I mean, also really simple math. 
We beat the Packers. The Lions beat us. You beat the Packers. The Lions beat you. Yeah. Therefore, the Lions are clearly That's superior. So sound. A plus B equals C. Something yeah. like that, right? Cowboys. Enough. Eat the, enough okay. for that. <laughs> <laughs> Chill. All right. I'm taking the Lions, too. All right. I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers. I think this week is their week. If you were to ask me right now how this series would be split up, I would say they probably split one and one. Right, you play your divisions twice. It doesn't feel like one team overpowers the other to where this feels like a split. So I'm going to take the home team on a short week. Short week, I kind of like going with the better coach. Feels like you get more prepared on uh, you know less time. And also, if you believe in just the zigzag theory, right? Last week the Lions covered big time, in la- and uh, even though the Packers beat the oh, Saints last week, they cover. didn't cover. So is that a thing? The zigzag theory? Oh yeah. yeah. Is that a thing that gamblers just tell themselves that are, that's well, no, thing? I mean, I don't know the exact number, but it does have a high hit percentage just going with the opposite. If one team covers and the other team doesn't. So Packers were like one and a half point favorites, maybe two point favorites. They squeak out a win. Uh, what I like most though is the under less time to prepare division rival Jared Goff outside. I feel like that's not a big of a narrative as it used to be, true, but I'm, true. I'm still going to, you know, factor that in a little bit. That's you fair. Know? Didn't really think about that. I guess at the end of the day, too, like if you, if I think they're similar teams, Packers are at home and getting points. Home I'm, dog. I'm switching. I'm I'm mm. I'm back on the pack. Yeah. Vibes. No, I got to stay with the Lions. Mm. I, wow, I do. What an idiot. I took the over, but I will say, like every time I'm like division match, this could be a shootout. Never. No, like, I feel like, like division one matchups, out of ten. I feel like division matchups are the other way around. Yeah. You got two teams that know each other really well. Like they they know how to play each other. That's fair. Still taking the over. Short week, too. Over for entertainment purposes. You know what's not fair? How JMO ends the video. Peace. <laughs> Cut the camera.